Hi, and welcome to a SonicWall Firewall video tutorial. My name is Micah Vorst. In this video, I'll discuss the concept of port forwarding. What is it? And when to use it? The concept port forwarding has a few names, including opening ports, NAT policies, and PAT. Although these terms describe a general concept, I'll provide examples of both NAT, or network address translation, and PAT, port address translation, so as to give you a better idea of what would work best in your environment and fulfilling the needs of your organization. Port forwarding is a popular topic for network administrators. Some of the most common reasons for using port forwarding is the need to host a website or custom app that end users or customers can access. For example, your organization probably has a website. If the web server is located within your company's network, you probably want your customers to have access. For customers to access your website, you'll need to provide public access, i.e. from the internet, to this web server. That's where port forwarding comes in. Port forwarding, or network address translation, was born out of the need of limited availability of public IP addresses. In most cases, unless you're a tech powerhouse, you won't have a large block of public IP addresses to assign to your public servers, such as your web server. It's more likely your company has a handful of public IP addresses. To bridge the gap, port forwarding takes the traffic destined to your public IP and translates it, or forwards it, to the local web server that has an internal IP. So, if network address translation, or NAT, is meant to take one IP and change it into another, port address translation, or PAT, takes a port number and translates it into another port. You may not know it, but we use ports every time we access the internet. By default, HTTPS and HTTP are on ports 443 and 80. Since these are standard ports, your web browser takes care of most of the work. PAT is important if you have a custom app that uses a non-standard port and you want to bridge the gap for your end users. In today's demonstration, I'll be using an NSA 6650 on the latest SonicOS 6.5 firmware. If you're following along, the menu structure has recently changed in 6.5 firmware. Although you may not have the same menu, the concept and policies are available in all supported major releases of Sonic OS. We'll create a NAT policy and access rule to allow our customers from the internet to access the web server on the company's local network. We first need the details of the web server. In this example, the internal IP is 192.168.168.200 and uses TCP port 8080 to host a local website. Customers will use the public IP address that we have already set up on the firewall. In this example, the X1 interface of the firewall is connected to the internet and has a public IP of 10.61.134.113. For those keeping score at home, our X1 IP is not actually a public IP address so you won't be able to visit our example website when the setup is complete. Now that we have the IP address and port number, we can create address objects and a service object in the firewall. Before we make any changes on the firewall, let's export a settings file. We'll log in, navigate to Manage, Firmware and Backups, and click Import Export Configuration, and then Export Configuration. We'll export this file to the Downloads folder just to keep it in a safe spot. Let's start with the Access Rule. As we set up the Access Rule, we'll also create our address and service objects. These objects will also be used by our NAT policy that we'll create in just a few moments. Navigate to Rules, Access Rules, and click Add. In our example, our web server is located in the LAN zone, so we'll select from Zone WAN to Zone LAN. If you don't have these options, you may want to go back and confirm that you're looking at the appropriate page. So, for example, if you select from WAN to WAN and then select Add, you will have a default 
from WAN to WAN. So if you don't see LAN, simply go back, select LAN, and then create your access rule. Now that we're ready to create our access rule, let's give it a friendly name. We'll call it Inbound Web Server. The action is to allow users to come into the firewall going to the web server. We'll be selecting the WAN zone on the from and then to to LAN. This is going to be the final destination of where the end user is uh, forwarded. So our internal web server is located on the LAN. Therefore, we want to have LAN in our to section. Source port will leave as any. Our service, we're going to go ahead and create a custom non-standard port. So for that, we'll simply select Create New Service. Give it a friendly name. In our case, we're going to use TCP port 8080 instead of the default port 80. Hit OK. Next, we're going to select Source. This is where your end user is coming from. That's going to be the internet in our case, so we'll select any. Next is destination, or where is the user trying to go. This is going to be the public IP address of our web server. Our NAT policy will then handle converting that public IP address and sending it to the internal IP address. But for now, our destination is the public IP. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new network here. Give it a friendly name. This is going to be on the WAN zone because our public IP is located on the WAN zone. Our type will be host. Our IP will be 10.61.134.113. Great. Hit OK. We don't need to worry about users including or excluding. By default, it will allow all users in and exclude none users. All right, we'll hit Add. Next, we'll create the NAT policy. Navigate to Rules, NAT Policies. We'll go ahead and click Add. We'll give it a friendly name as well. The original source will be our end user coming from the internet. We don't want to play with their IP, so we're going to select any. The translated source will select as original. We don't want to change their IP address from one to another. We want to leave it the same. We're going to actually change our public IP and forward traffic to our internal web server, so we'll do that here in destination. Our original destination is going to be the public web, and I believe that's going to be all the way at the bottom. There we go. Our translated destination will be the internal IP address of the web server. We haven't created an address object for this yet, so let's do that now. Select Create New Address Object. It is located on the LAN zone. We'll go ahead and give the appropriate IP of the current server. Click OK. Great. So we have the original source as any, translated source as original, original destination of our public IP, and then also translating that traffic when customers do hit the public IP to translate that and send them to our internal IP address of the web server. We're almost done. We just simply need to select our service. So the custom port that we created was uh, TCP port 8080. So we're going to go ahead and select that now. We don't need to change or translate this port, so we'll select Original. The only other thing to change is the inbound interface. We know that our end users will always come from the X1 interface of our firewall, so we'll select it to make this a very specific NAT policy. Once you're done, go ahead and select Add, and then Close. That should do it. Let's pull up our phone, which represents our end user coming from the internet, and type in the address 1061.134.113.8080. Great! 
It works as expected. So what if we want to use a standard port, say port 80, but our website has to use port 8080? Simple. We change the NAT policy and access rule to accept connections on port 80 and then translate the traffic port to 8080. Let's go back to our NAT policy and click Edit. Change the original service to port 80 and then change the translated service to port 8080. We'll go ahead and click OK. We'll then go to our access rule and modify the service for HTTP. Select Access Rule, edit the access rule that we just created, change the service from 8080 to port 80, and hit OK. Great, let's test that out on our phone. Now, we just have to enter the public IP address of the website and let the browser use the standard port, which is 80. So customers from the internet can access our website, but what about internal employees that are on the corporate network? They could use the internal IP address of the web server to access the resources, but we want to use the same public IP address, and currently it does not work for people behind the firewall. We can easily resolve this problem by creating a loopback NAT policy. As the name implies, a loopback policy takes the internal traffic going to the X1 interface of the firewall and sends it in the right direction. In our example, a web server. We can quickly add the loopback policy by navigating to the NAT policies and selecting Add. We'll give it a friendly name. In this case, we'll call it Web Server Loopback. We'll select the original source as Firewalled Subnets. our translated source as the public IP, we'll then select the original destination, which is the same, public IP, and then select our web server. Our original service will be, uh, let's do port 80 for this, and then translate it to port 8080. So what we have is anyone who is behind the firewall trying to access the public IP will convert their IP to the public IP and then send that traffic to the internal web server. Don't forget, we're also translating the port, which is PAT. So from port 80, we're translating to port 8080. We'll go ahead and click Add. Now that we've created the loopback policy, internal employees on the company network should now be able to access the website. Let's confirm just to make sure. Success! Now that we have everything working as expected, it's always a good idea to save a settings file just in case something should happen. We'll select Manage, Firmware and Backups, Import Export Configuration, and then click Export Configuration, just like what we did at the beginning of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful. To learn more about configuring SonicWall products, visit www.sonicwall.com/support.